Rose Queen started um, pretty much growing up. I grew up in outside of Tyler, Texas, which is where they have the Rose Festival. And uh, and growing up, my dad always um, said, uh, you know, don't go dating the Rose Queen because you can't afford her because it's a very upscaled festival. And um, so when I got to college, uh, recorded a couple albums uh, up in Lubbock and um, had some really, really good songwriting friends up there. And uh, one of them is named Kenneth O'Meara. We were talking about songwriting. We had we had been songwriting buddies since freshman year of college, and um, and we sat down after dinner and we were talking about song song ideas. And I had told him the, you know, what my dad's quote was, uh, growing up and the whole idea of the Rose Queen. And uh, when I told him this, and I've been thinking about this song idea for a long time. When I finally when I told him, he kind of like, his eyes kind of lit up, and he was like, "Dude, that's a great idea for a song." And uh, I thought it'd be neat to uh, to do the album. Uh, call the album Rose Queen. Um, it was a fun song, and um, and the previous album Misunderstood was about Lubbock, and uh, this is about Tyler, and uh, and hopefully continue the trend of, of picking Texas towns um, to devote dedicate albums to. Hi, right, this is William Clark Green. Here's a look inside our new record, Rose Queen. We knew the title track of the record before we started the album, um, and uh, the process of starting the album was it was hectic. We had uh, we had no management, we had no booking. The band was kind of the band wasn't falling apart at the seams, but we we lost a member, a, a really important member, and I knew that we needed to do something drastic um, to keep hopes and keep everybody's. Uh, line of work ethic towards the goal of coming out with a great record so we had talked with um, multiple producers um, I talked about I knew I wanted to go somewhere that would be an experience we could go for a week, week weeks at a time and, and do a record outside you know travel and uh, I was talking with um, Brian Keene one night and uh, and he told me uh, you should talk to my wife Rachel she she knows a lot of great producers um, she's very in tune with uh, <clears throat> with musicians um, and uh, I feel like she could find someone you know that you could you could work with and I set up a phone meeting with her and talked with her and uh, she was giving me all these different options and players that could play on it uh, that would play along with my band and and studios and and uh, and producers and she had it just man she had it lined out and uh, and at the end of the conversation it was like 15 minutes and I, was, I just it just clicked I was like why don't why don't you produce our record have you ever produced an album before and she said, uh, "She said, well, I've done a couple, and I was like, uh, I was like, I feel pretty comfortable with you, with you producing our album. Um, you know, would you like to do it?" And uh, she jumped at it. The direction that she was, she was putting it was was exactly what we wanted. Um, and we 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 pulled the trigger on it. And she uh, she was our producer, and she picked studio time, and um, and uh, and that's how it started. We wanted to, we wanted to make the best record possible, and. Uh, and we felt like we had a budget that we could accomplish, uh, <laughs> which at times, you know, how, how how big of a hole do you want to dig? You know, it's the first record that I've done that I've been 100% happy with every song that we did, and that that to me as uh, speaks volumes for the producer to be uh, able to allow that outlet to find uh, where the song needs to be and and. Um, you know, as me as a songwriter um, and a half-ass musician, uh, it's very difficult for me to relay what is in my head, even though I know what I want, but it's hard for me to tell someone what I want. I just kind of like know it when I hear it. It was a great experience. I cannot wait to get back in the studio with her. And um, the band did a phenomenal job. Um, Jay Saldana on drums, Cameron Moreland on bass, Stephen Marcus on guitar. And, uh, and uh, they killed it. And uh, it came out with a record that we're all very, very proud of. And uh, I feel like it made us um, a lot more comfortable with each other. Um, and I think a lot of individual talents were recognized in the studio as opposed to playing a live show. I feel like that was uh, one of the biggest things that we gained from the experience was 
was really seeing how talented everybody was and and hearing Rachel, you know, a professional musician, you know, go-to bass player in Nashville, uh, brag about, you know, Cameron's bass playing and Jay's drumming and Steve's, uh, Steve's guitar licks, you know. Um, hearing that uh, feedback from her, you know, was was a big confidence boost. Um, we, you know, we went to we went to Nashville to make a Texas record, which is a bizarre train of thought. Um, and we, we went there, and our deal was, you know, we don't want this to sound like a Nashville record, uh, which sounds like, well, why did you go to Nashville? Well, we wanted to have band vibe, and we wanted simplistic tones. Um, you know, we didn't want to we didn't want a lot of um, stuff on the tracks. You know that effects and stuff um just wanted a simple good sounding clear record the record is honest um writing wise playing wise um you know I, i'm a firm believer that uh the guys that played on the album and we had some we had some studio people come in too we had a studio steel player and uh banjo and mandolin and uh, brian Keed played uh, keys and uh organ organ piano um but the majority of the people, the, the brass tacks, the bass, drums, guitar, vocals, the songwriting, everything is, is, is honest. Um, there's no bullshit. Uh, she Likes the Beatles was a song that, um, that I had came up with uh, due to a phone conversation my drummer was having with his girlfriend. And uh, they were in an argument uh, and he put the phone down and uh, he was shaking his head, you know. And the only analogy he could come up with was uh, he was so angry. He's like, she likes the Beatles and I like the Stones and that just explains our relationship. We'll never, we never come together on anything. And uh, we were in Eastland uh, when that happened and I, I ran to my room and wrote down, uh, she likes the Beatles and I like the Stones in my room. And I walked back in just smiling, you know. And uh, I don't think they anybody really understood what happened when he said that. And uh, but I knew as soon as I heard it, I was like, man, that song is it. That 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 could definitely be a song. She likes the Beatles, and I like the Stones. She likes romantic movies. I like Indiana Jones. Yeah. She goes to church, and I stay at home. Oh, she likes the Beatles, and I like the Stones. This is Rose Queen.